Solstices! Happy Summer Solstice! I got my yellow shirt on in honor of the day that we have the most sun, the brightest. And it's just such a perfect day here because really the skies are completely blue. There isn't a cloud in sight and it really is just the most perfect summer solstice day ever. So I want to say happy summer solstice to you all. It's also Father's Day, so happy Father's Day. And uh, it's the first day of summer, so how wonderful is that for us who uh, are in the Northern Hemisphere here and winter feels like it drags on forever. So I felt like today was the perfect day to go out and pick some Alberta wild roses. They're always in bloom. They start around this time of the year. I always find just prior to the summer solstice is when they start to bloom. And um, with any luck, you'll be able to harvest them for the next few weeks, month, maybe even longer than that because they stagger their blossom time. So you'll be able to revisit areas around your home or um, in nature and harvest continually for the next few weeks, which is fantastic. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the benefits of roses and I want to share a recipe with you guys today which is one of our family's all-time favorite ways that we like to use roses and it really is um, such a, a, a wonderful treat to have during the winter months when um, summer feels like it was such a distant memory and you just want a taste and just to capture a little bit of that summer vibe. So what we are doing today is harvesting roses from the bush and we are going to make infused honey. So we're going to we're going to make wild rose honey today and it really is ever so simple although I will take you into my kitchen today and show you the process. So all you're going to want to do is grab maybe like a one liter mason jar like this and you're going to want to start filling it up with these lovely rose petals. Uh, and when you get to about halfway, three quarters of the way, you can stop and then we are going to fill that up with some local honey. And the best way to do that is to make sure that your honey is in a liquid state, but we'll get to that later. Right now what I want to show you is the roses behind me that I found and just a little bit of wild crafting etiquette when you're picking wild roses. So let me show you. Rainy baby, can you hold this for me for a second? I got a helper today. Um, so you can see behind me here that we have some Alberta wild roses. There they are. And they're just starting to bloom. They just look so beautiful. What I want to let you guys know is that when you're picking roses, be courteous to our pollinator friends. You'll see that um, oftentimes when you go to pick roses, there will be little bugs and creatures inside of the rose feasting on the little the the nectar and all the good stuff that's in there i'm not sure if that's showing you exactly but you, there's a little buggy in there and you'll see many bugs in there so when we have when we go to pick wild rose you should always um, make a habit of leaving one or two petals behind so i've gone ahead and I've picked this rose, but I didn't pick it fully. And that's because these beautiful pink colored petals are what indicate to the, the bugs and the bees and everything that pollinates them that, hey, come here, pollinate me. That's why flowers are these gorgeous, beautiful colors because it's like a, like a flashing sign to these little pollinator bugs saying, come here, come here and pollinate me. So if you go and you harvest all of the petals out of this bush completely, then our pollinating friends won't be able to identify a rose, pollinate it, which then will create a rose hip later on in the autumn, in the fall. And we want to be able to harvest rose hips later in the season as well, because they are fantastic for wintertime teas. They're very high in vitamin C. And so it's just a really good thing to have on hand during the winter months. I think I read, um, actually Rain, pass me my Boreal Herbal book. I want to show you guys one of my favorite books of all time. And I have, if you're a follower or a fan of mine, then you'll have seen me talk about this book before. 
This is called the Boreal Herbal, and it's written by a lovely herbalist up north in the Yukon, Beverly Gray. In here, she has a great little section about roses and how you can use them in various ways. And I think it was her where I read that um, she said, when you harvest, make sure you leave a petal or two behind for the pollinator friends. Um, and the rose hips, which will develop later in the season if we don't, if, if we can make sure that our pollinator friends can pollinate the rose. Um, I think she said three rose hips is the equivalent to one uh, orange for vitamin C content. So our rose hips are one of our highest uh, plant sources of vitamin C and bioflavonoids and things that are fantastic for you, for your general health. So, so be courteous, let those roses um, still indicate to our pollinator friends that, hey, we're here, come and pollinate us, okay? So when you harvest, <clears throat> basically I will just go and I'll just make sure that there isn't any buggies in there um, and I will take, on this one, I'll take three petals and I've left, I've left two behind. You can see there's a bug inside of there right now and then I will just add these lovely petals to my jar. Um, I also want to show you guys a really cool thing about the roses. Uh, Rain, can you find me a rose petal that's shaped like a heart? So you'll often find when you're harvesting roses, here's one, I think I found one. Yeah. Let me hear. You got a good one? Yeah, so you're going to see when you harvest the roses that they are more times than not shaped like a heart. Here's another one that I just picked. Look, isn't that so wonderful? What herbalists like to call this is, um, it's called a doctrine of signatures. And this is a herbalist belief that plants like to communicate with us and they like to show us sometimes exactly what this plant is good for. And so if you if you know, rose is our, our classic plant uh, flower that is indicated for love, for your heart. And, and it just so happens that roses make really great medicine for your heart too. So they're not just shaped like a heart, they actually are good for your heart. And they're good for love and they're the symbol of romance and passion and love and all that good stuff. So isn't that cool? That's called a doctrine of signatures. Okay, so um, you are going to meet me in the kitchen in a moment here and we're gonna make some rose infused honey. This little treat that we make, like I said, in the winter months, it's such a great little reminder of the summer. We like to put it in our teas. We'll make, you know, iced tea or whatever kind of drink that needs a little bit of sweetening, but with a floral little taste to it. And we will use that rose honey. We like to put it on toast and it's a fantastic treat. So I hope you enjoy it and get a chance to pick some roses in your area. I just want to let you guys know a couple other ways that I have tried using roses before and I didn't have very good success. So I have tried doing um, like a rose infused body oil and I've never had a lot of success capturing the rose aroma. Um, roses, although they have, it's considered a gentle aroma but yet strong. Um, I've never really been able to capture that in a body oil or in bath salts or anything like that. They're just too delicate, too much of a delicate floral aroma to really um, capture it in a traditional, you know, just soaking it in oil. So, um, yeah, it's it's been a disappointment for me in the past sometimes. I've tried making my own rose hydrosol before and that was a disaster as well. Um, so really the only way so far that our family uses rose petals is for tea as well as the rose hips. I prefer the rose hips, truth be told, but roses are lovely for tea as well. Um, but the rose honey is our favorite. Okay, so I'm gonna meet you in the kitchen in a little bit here and I'm going to show you how we make rose honey. All right, see you later. Okay, we are in my kitchen now and we are about to make that rose infused honey. So I want to just show you the process even though it's ever so easy. All right, so what I did was I brought in our rose petals. Now you might notice that, that this isn't a lot of rose petals and truth be told I was hoping to get quite a bit more but I'm feeling like um, 
the season of the rose petals is just kind of starting. So I'm a little bit ahead of the curve. So what I decided I'm gonna do is uh, I will just, I harvested what I felt I could today. I'm going to pour my honey into here. And then as I see more roses bloom in the next few weeks, I will gather more and I will just add them into the jar, give them a stir, and then that'll be fine. So typically when I harvest rose petals, yeah, I like to fill a one liter jar at least halfway, if not three quarters of the way, okay? So those are my rose petals. The other thing I did off camera that I would like to share with you is um, basically I just took the rose petals and I dumped them onto my counter and kind of you know sp sprinkled them about and then just let any buggies that were in there escape. So you'll often find on the rose petals little tiny black bugs and if you look close, you might find white spiders in there. I've noticed that over the last few years that um, because I'm early this season, there's actually a little white spider on my counter. He's just tiny, but as the season goes on, they actually get pretty big. So for those of you who are scared of spiders, you might notice on the Alberta wild rose this weird white spider with a big body that looks a little bit freaky, but he's actually kind of cute too. So make sure you let those bugs escape because unless you want a little bit of extra protein in your infused honey, which I don't typically like. So I just went through and I, um, it's what us herbalists call garbling. Garbling is when you put the herbs that you picked out onto a counter and you just kind of you know, move them about and you just see, oh, there's a little bug there and a little bug there and you can, you know, blow on the little rose petals if there's a little bug on there. And then, you know, depending on how fussy you are, you might want to inspect each side of the rose petal. It's up to you. Okay, so that's our roses and um, a couple here. And then I, what I did was I went to my stove, put a little bit of honey in a saucepan and on a really low heat, I melted some honey. Um, if I had liquid honey, I would prefer to use that because then it would save me this extra step. But since I don't have liquid honey, all of my honey was solid, then I just put some honey in a pot, low heat, and just uh, heated it up until melting. You wanna be careful with honey that you don't um, nuke it on a really high heat. I try to avoid microwaves. We don't even have a microwave, but. Uh, just a low heat to respect all those natural enzymes and good things that are naturally present in the honey. You don't want to kill that because it has a lot of good stuff in it for you. So um, so what I'm going to do, even though typically when you do a floral infusion, you only just, you basically just need to cover the plant. I'm going to actually put quite a bit of honey in here. Um, and like I said, I'll harvest and add more petals to this as I go. If for some reason my honey um, solidifies in the time that I need to go and you know add more to the jar then I'll just probably pop the jar in a nice hot water bath to get it to liquefy again and then I'll just stir it up look how lovely okay by the way in the past we've done lilac infused honey too that's really good I'm not sure if lilacs are still in season right now we don't have lilacs in our yard but that would be another good flower to go out and, and harvest. Okay, so you'll see that the ratio of honey to roses is definitely off. You should have quite a bit more roses in here. And then all you have to do is jar, um, put the lid on, which I'm not sure if I have right now. So you would cap it and make sure you date it. So I always like to date my, um, the, I put on the label what it is. And I like to put the date on because some herbalists will say, okay, let this infuse for two weeks or six weeks. I don't even know what they say because you know what? We just take the lazy route and we don't take the roses out. We pour the honey in, I'll give it a stir. I have a spoon here actually, which I will do that right now while we're chatting. I'll give it a stir and we don't take the rose petals out. Um, so to me, how long you infuse it for is just, it doesn't matter to our family because we really enjoy the taste of those little rose petals on a piece of toast or um, you know, floating when you, if you add a little bit to your tea as you're infusing your tea and you have one of those little tea strainers, you just put this inside the tea strainer and if you don't want the rose petals in your tea, it will just um, capture it in that little strainer and you won't be 
sipping on rose petals, but we actually really love the taste of rose petals. And in fact, I challenge you when you're going out to pick rose petals to munch on one or two if you ever, um, if you come across them on your journeys, because it really is a beautiful, a, a beautiful taste. My children love to eat them too. So, okay, so that's our um, rose infused honey. While I have you, I want to mention a couple other things that I was reading about from the book that I mentioned earlier about roses and how they're good for you. So my favorite herb for um, any type of wounds outside that we might receive, my go-to is plantain. However, rose petals are also known as bush bandage, according to Beverly Gray. And although our family has never tried this, it said that you can, if you were to get um, a bee sting or a bug bite, you can actually take one of those petals and you can put it right on your, your little wound or your bite. And because the rose is a, a nice cooling plant, it helps to take the heat and the sting out of those. So that is something that you could try if you ever couldn't find plantain or you weren't sure how to identify it, but you could see the rose. So keep that one in mind. Um, rose hip syrup, as I mentioned before, um, or rose hips, I said, were, were really high in vitamin C, so they make a great addition to your wintertime teas. But also, um, you can take the rose hips and you can make a syrup. And apparently, this is really good for people who are anemic or have some issues with iron because rose hips are high in all um, iron and things like that. So a rose hip syrup might be something that you want to add into your diet if you know that you have troubles with some iron, okay? Um, apparently they are said to increase your blood, your red blood cell count, so that's awesome. Um, also, your flowers, don't forget, you can just simply add them to a salad. So if you made a beautiful spinach salad or some, some summertime salad, don't forget to go outside and, and harvest those rose petals, some dandelion blossom, and you can just sprinkle them on salads for a really beautiful summer treat. Also, you can use them to top cakes. And so if you make a really a birthday cake or a wedding cake or something, you can use fresh flowers to adorn the top of the cake with, which is really beautiful. Um, okay, also rose petal jelly which again, our family has never tried, but I'm sure intrigued. I can imagine that rose petal jelly would be one of the most delicious and divine little treats on earth. Um, it would be sweet and it would have that floral. So apparently rose, rose petal jelly is a really divine treat, but also you can make rose hip jelly. Okay, so either, either one. Um, Okay, so you can also use the rose hips as a base for ice cream and sorbets and, and even on the more from going away from the sweet side and entering the savory side, you can use it for fish and wild game meat. So that's another thing that our family needs to try that for. Cosmetically, rose petals um, are such an ancient plant that we have always gone to to create our potions and lotions with. And that's because roses have this really great ability to help pretty much all skin types. So rose is often used in anti-aging creams, um, moisturizing creams, serums, elixirs, things like that, because it is good for anti-aging and mature skin. But also um, rose, rose concoctions are good for dry skin types and oily skin types. So roses right across the board are fantastic for many skin types and that's why you will see them often in cosmetic formulations. They can also help with kind of dull, lifeless skin, so that's great. You can also take the rose petals and you can infuse them in witch hazel or vinegar and you can make your own to um, facial tonic. So very easy to do, you would simply just take a jar, put rose petals in it, top it off with apple cider vinegar, um, I prefer apple cider vinegar to regular vinegar or witch hazel if you have it on hand and you could do a rose infused witch hazel or a rose infused apple cider vinegar and you can use that to tone as a toner for your skin. Apparently you just let the rose petals, um, usually about two weeks for really delicate florals like this is enough to transfer the medicine and the goodness from that rose into that medium, whatever it is, the witch hazel or the vinegar. Um, apparently it can help to balance your oil production when you use a toner um, with the roses. It can also be useful for both dry and oily skin, so keep that in mind. 
Um, also can be good for balancing your skin's pH and uh, tightening pores. So if you have large pores, it might be a good thing for you. Um, also because it has anti antibacterial properties in it, it can be good for fighting acne. And on that note, um, rose honey can be good for facials as well. So in the wintertime months or you know, as soon as after a couple weeks have passed, you could use this honey in facials and it would be fantastic for your skin. You could also harvest the rose petals and put them in a bowl over, let's say you have a saucepan with a little bit of um, water that you just freshly boiled. You could get a little, make a double boiler with a little bowl and you could put rose petals in there. And um, I guess you would add boiling water right into your rose petals and then you could do a steam. So yeah, I guess you don't, we wouldn't even need this so much. You could, but you could get a bowl, your rose petals, pour in some boiling water, put your face over the bowl very carefully not to burn yourself and cover your head with a towel and you could do a rose petal facial steam. How indulgent would that be? Um, okay, so that uh, I think are the, oh, also another person that I love to follow online is a woman from Victoria. Her company is called Gather Victoria. She often does beautiful baking and lovely divine little cakes and magical treats with uh, wild crafted ingredients like roses. She has many recipes for rose infused um, things, but one of, one of the things that I noticed she does a lot is she'll take her delicate flowers like this and infuse them into cream. Um, so like cow's cream, you know, and then she will use that cream in her baking or she'll use it to create these delicious desserts. And I've always wanted to try. I think it would be a fantastic thing to experience. So that subtly rose flavored cream or something like that, that you could use in treats a rose infused ice cream. Imagine we have a homemade ice cream maker at home. That would be good. Um, okay. And did you know, of course, being, being the green goddess, I have rose essential oil. And did you know that it takes 5,000 pounds of rose petals to make one pound of rose oil? I make a pure rose perfume and it's a little tiny five mil roller bottle. And in that little bottle, 900 roses were needed to make that perfume. So it requires a large amount of roses to create a small amount of rose essential oil. That's why it comes with a hefty price tag of about 300 or so dollars for a little bottle. Not my stuff, not my, not my perfume, because I dilute it for you so it's safe to apply. But when I purchase a 15 mil essential oil bottle from my suppliers, it's about 300 or so dollars. So yikes, okay? Um, yeah, so if you get the real stuff, the real pure rose, um, it's it can be quite pricey. And that's why my previous attempts to infuse rose petals into bath salts or into oil just doesn't really cut the mustard because there's such a huge amount that is needed. And there's very special techniques that have been developed in order to extract that rose aroma. And unfortunately, I don't have the technology. Although that being said, I am looking into purchasing a copper Olympic still, which would allow me to produce my own hydrosols and essential oils soon. So stay tuned for that. Okay, one last little caution that I want you to be aware of is, is you can go around when in the fall in the fall when the rose petals develop into a rose hip. And you could eat them, but they have little irritating hairs inside of them. So I know that some people like to munch on them, but you have to be careful that those little irritating hairs inside the rose hip um, are removed prior to munching. Um, if you're using them for tea and you just put them in your tea strainer, then they will just stay in that tea strainer and won't irritate, but they can um, create some irritation in the digestive tract. And apparently in some places they call rose hips itchy bums because that's what will happen if you eat too many of them. Those little hairs will go through your digestive tract and make you want to itch from the inside out. So just a note to be aware of. Okay, I better be quiet. That's it for roses for this year. So get out there. I hope you feel inspired to go harvest yourself some rose and um, happy summer solstice to you all coming from the green goddess. We'll see you again. Bye. Thank you.